Today's video is brought to you by Squarespace, my go-to for building a website and online shop. Hello dear friends, today's video is part two of a three-part series featuring my most recent oil painting. Real quick before I begin, if you'd like to see a one-hour version of this video where I recorded instructional voiceover as I was painting in real time, along with hundreds of hours of exclusive content and monthly art rewards, feel free to check out my Patreon at patreon.com slash happydartist. Let's start with a quick recap of the previous video where I did a small concept sketch of a woman encircled by a school of goldfish. In the concept sketch, I used a simple 3x3 three three grid and diagonal lines connecting the four corners to help design the composition. Then, when it came time to sketch the block in with paint on my panel, I utilized those same guidelines to match the composition and placement from the concept sketch. I prefer to block in with paint because it's faster than transferring a drawing, and also I get to hone my natural intuition for measuring accurate proportions. Now on to today's segment, the grisaille. As you all know, my current go-to technique is to create a grisaille layer using bohemian green earth and titanium white before I start applying any color. The grisaille is especially handy as an intermediate transition step between a rougher block-in sketched with paint to a more refined and tightly rendered color layer. Trying to render in color on top of the sketchy block-in is too daunting for me because I don't feel like the block-in contains enough information by itself. The rough sketchy lines lack preciseness, which can greatly influence the anatomical proportions and compositional layout. There is also little to no indication of the value hierarchy, so I don't really know how my lightest values stack against the darkest and how all the halftones in between should be arranged. So if I went directly from the block in to color rendering without the grisaille, I would end up having to juggle way too much at once. The grisaille helps me refine the proportions and exact placement of all the compositional elements. It establishes the value hierarchy, which is crucial in designing dynamic contrast and visual impact. And it also sets me up for some fun glazing effects, which I will go over in part three coming up next. By the way, thank you so much for being patient with me as I'm splitting each painting into several videos. This format allows me to have more time to thoroughly explain each stage of the painting process, but it also allows me to continue generating fresh new content each month. I'm going through a rather busy season of my personal life right now, so I don't have as much time to make two new paintings every month like usual, and it's nice to be able to create several videos out of a single painting. I've been trying to break out of this self-imposed rule that I can only make one video for each painting because oil painting by nature takes a long time and documenting a painting's journey in several parts is actually a more accurate reflection of the natural pace of the creative process. Over the last few years, studying in a more structured atelier environment, I really developed an appreciation for separating the different tasks of oil painting into stages, with each stage focusing on its own task. This makes the entire process a lot more palatable and manageable than trying to juggle all the tasks at once. Concept sketching and thumbnailing stage is all about creativity and composition design. The block-in stage is all about setting a blueprint for the proportions and accurate measurements. The grisaille stage is about refining the proportions and most importantly, establishing a value hierarchy. And then the main color pass is about color harmony and color temperature relationships, and of course, exquisite rendering. And lastly, the final glazing pass is about certain special effects that can only be achieved through glazing, um, smoothness, and fine-tuning the piece towards perfection. I've learned that creating art needs a healthy balance of whimsy and structure. We need to be free and adventurous when coming up with ideas, but we also need some order and planning to execute those ideas well. In some ways, the grisaille is a halfway point 
going from the wild freedom of invention towards the careful meticulousness of execution. It is the stage that starts with a rough initial sketch of ideas and primes it for the precise and difficult rendering stage ahead. So while the grisaille initially seemed uninteresting and repetitive to me and perhaps a bit unnecessary, now it's become one of the most crucial steps in creating a painting. Here I am using an old tiny bristle brush to apply a thick generous application of titanium white on the body of the fish in order to visually elevate them from the rest of the piece. Once this dries in about a week, I can glaze a semi-transparent layer of a chromatic yellow on top of it to portray the effect of luminous metallic goldfish scales. Again, that will be featured in the third and final video coming up next. Anyway, thank you all so much for watching today's video. Stay tuned for the third and final part coming up in the next few days, and I can't wait to chat with you all soon. And of course, you guessed it, my eternal never-ending sale is still going on in my shop. So if you'd like 20% off your order of prints and originals, just enter the code HOLIDAY at happyd-artist.com. And if you're interested in learning more about how to paint and draw, I have lots of art educational content on my Patreon page, including exclusive video tutorials, step-by-step -step photo tutorials, live streams, podcasts, and even surprise art gift boxes. All available at patreon.com slash happydartist. I'd love to have you join my Patreon family. A big thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video and supporting the art community. Squarespace is the best platform to create a professional website and online shop. Their beautifully designed templates are easy to use for beginners and look great on both desktop and mobile. I've sold my art through Squarespace for almost 10 years and I can attest to the quality of their online commerce features, whether you want to sell digital or physical items. They also provide useful analytics that help you make the most of your online business. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash happydartist to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Also, if you want to check out more artworks, works in progress, and just random daily artist adventures, feel free to check out my Instagram and you can follow me at the handle at happydartist.